All right, we're coming at you for part two of the whirlwind tour of Floyd County, Iowa. And uh, in this one, we're gonna take you to what is referred to as the slab um, in Charles City, where the Oliver tractor facility used to be located. Um, unfortunately, there's basically nothing left to show you other than a slab of concrete. Um, I didn't actually realize it until we got into this project that July of this year, 2023, is going to be the 30th anniversary of white farm equipment basically getting dissolved. The Charles City plant shut down in 93, South Bend shut down in 93, but July of 93 is when the Charles City plant finally rolled out its last transmission housing and sent it to Coldwater, because at that point it was just a, uh, sub. It, they produced sub-assemblies for the cold water facility where tractor production had been relocated to. Um, so like I say, there's basically nothing physically there to show you other than a slab of concrete. So I have a visual aid here um, that I'll show you in a second. Um, what else was I gonna say before I actually showed you the picture here? Um, and we can't really walk around the site a whole lot because most of it Actually, all of it is private land now. Um, some of it, I believe, is owned by a trucking company where they have a shop and they park some of their uh, equipment, um, which you'll see that building in the first clip here. And then the... I got all turned around when we got there. I think it's the north side of the site, but it might have been the east side of the site. I don't know which direction we were actually facing at that point. Um, actually looking at that picture, it might have been the north side because in that picture it looks like they're taking it at sunrise and it looks like the sun is over here, which would be the east, which would make that north. So I believe it's the north side of the site. They're actually just now getting to tearing out the concrete. There was construction going and there dirt work going on while we were, not while we were there, but had been not too long before we got there. There's fresh dirt work. Um, sounds like they're wanting to redevelop that site into something new, which I'd be in, I'd be curious to know how much uh, super fun site stuff they're going to get into because I gotta believe the ground there is dirty as hell because that was where the foundry was. Um, but anyway, you're in this video. You'll meet the guy that kind of started this whole deal, and he's the one that contacted me and asked me to come out and. Did most of the legwork as far as setting everything up with the guys out there. Um, and he gets he gets around good for the shape he's in, but he's not in any kind of shape to be jumping around busted up concrete and jumping over tr over saplings and whatnot. So we can't, like I say, because of his lack of decent mobility anymore and um, the fact that most of that is all private land. You can't just go walk around it. There's not a whole lot that I could actually physically show you other than we walked up to the edge of the slab and he kind of pointed, this is where this was, this is where this was, and whatnot. So um, this is this is where my visual aid comes in, and this is not going to be the first time you see this picture. In this video series, you'll get a explanation as to how I got this picture probably in the next video. But this is an aerial shot of the Charles City plant. And I believe, if I'm reading the date, I don't know how Kodak did their date codes, but if I'm reading this right, I think that date code would be 515 of 89, I think. Don't quote me on that, but judging by some of the stuff I see in the picture, it's believable. Um, and at, like I say, at this t if if that is the case when this picture was taken, basically... They were pouring raw castings and machining transmissions and, sub and doing sub-assemblies that would get shipped out to cold water to be assembled into most likely, well at that point it would be, that would still be workhorses, right? Yeah, yeah, that would still be the workhorse series. Um, right? I think so. Right? I think so. I'll probably be wrong, but I think so. But um, basically, while we were doing this, we made three stops. The first one 
was basically right here just past what i believe not anymore but way back in the day used to be a little train depot here on the corner next to this elevator so basically we were parked along this street and we walked along or we crossed over oh sorry i lied that's railroad tracks this is the street so we were parked along this street and we walked there's still this little building here it looks like a railroad depot though um but judging by how far away it is from the siding i'm guessing it wasn't but that one probably was so anyway we were parked here and we walked across this railroad siding and we were basically standing right here looking this way and now like i say all these buildings are gone and there is that uh steel building here with the semi trailers and stuff parked around it that i'm i'm guessing has something to do with a trucking company um and then there's a cross street here and it sounds like the south side of the plant from the way he described it is basically maintenance facilities light machining offices um warehousing uh stuff like that um and then down here at this end it's it was gone by the time this picture was taken. Actually, it was destroyed in the tor there was In 1968, there's a tornado that came up through town and basically just skirted the front of the plant there. And there was a little building out here with a turntable in it known as the Tractor Display Building. And they could park tractors in there and it would light up at night and whatnot. And the tractors would just sit in there on a turntable and, tur and turn. Um, but you'll see pictures of that and that would have been right down here. And then on our second stop, we came down the street here, and there is actually a cross street, and I was going to look up the name, and I can't remember it. Um, actually, hold on a second. I'll look up the name of that street for you real quick on my phone. Okay, so this road here that we started off on that runs along these houses, that is 13th Street. And then this crossroad that you can't really see through the smoke, but you can see them cars parked right there. Um, that is E Street that splits the plant in half north and south um so when we stopped hi Peter. when we made our second stop we were basically parked right here in this little driveway area between these two buildings looking this way um and this side of the plant this is obviously the foundry this would be assembly um our main assembly hydraulic assembly paint whatnot that that all all the all the main all the heavy work happened on this side of the street so we were on the second stop we were parked here looking this way and then the test track you won't see anywhere in the video because this whole area is grown up with trees now um but if you look at if you go on google earth and you find the the slab on google earth the entire test track is still there intact minus the building. You can still see it through the trees. You just can't see it from anywhere on the ground because the trees are so thick. And if you look in this picture, there's a four-wheel drive carcass right there. And there's a four-wheel drive. I think that's a carcass. I can't tell if there's a nose on it, but there's a four-wheel drive right there. That is the test sled, it appears. So there's there's some stuff still parked here. Um, and then on our third stop, we actually came around the corner here and there's a, this street here is called Cleveland or yeah, Cleveland street. And we turned or we parked right about in here. Um, there's some stuff that would be, be off this picture that he referred to as the Cleveland street, uh, facility. And it basically sounded like there was a building there that they did some prototyping work in and they kind of used their, there was a field here that they used for overflow for parking tractors. So, and like I say, they closed this, the, the facility kind of closed down in stages throughout the month of uh, July of 1993. And he said it didn't take much more than a year afterwards and all this was gone they they basically leveled the entire building the foundry if this will really chafe your chaps the foundry the building obviously was tore down but basically the entire all the guts of the building all of the equipment and cranes and everything inside the foundry building was packed up and shipped to china so that gives you a real good warm fuzzy feeling um 
So, but like I say, this, there's nothing to show you anymore because this was, all of this was completely demolished in the 90s. And like this was all, this area was all chain link fenced off. And like I say, they were doing, there was fairly fresh dirt work. And he said that the city's looking to develop it because it sounds like the city owns this area. Um, and apparently the railroad still owns some property in here too. Um, but if you look, if you see any factory photos of tractors loaded on rail cars with a kind of a brick wall in the background, that should be along this building right here on this rail line. Um, so, yeah. That's kind of a overview of what Charles City was and kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking at but not looking at in the in the video you're about to see. So I think that covers everything I need for an explanation on that. Yeah, I think I got I think I pretty much got you up to snuff on what needs to happen or on what you what you needed to know. So with that being said, on to the video. Okay, so we're here with, I don't know, do you want me to use your last name or just your first name? No, you, I don't care. Yeah, let's use your first name. So we're here with Al. He's the one that started this whole shenanigan and he's going to show us what is, what is left of where the Oliver Charles City production facility was although as you can see there's basically nothing it's just kind of a concrete slab but he's gonna kind of point to where things were and kind of the way things were laid out and it sounds like we're gonna make a couple different stops here so so you said this is the what would have been the west end of the facility yes and basically the uh, old power station was in this area that produced electricity before the power could be uh, sourced through the city and uh, then the west end of the plant was basically more of the office space for production control, accounting, inventory control, and uh, other associated uh, office duties were done there. Um, the, man the plant manager's office was there. Uh, as you look down this empty slab area, um, the gears and shafts were done there. The heat treat area um, then, uh, when we, uh, go a little bit further down, uh, where all the sheet metal parts were made, uh, the 100 ton press was there that did the, that did the heavy lifting when something needed to be stamped out, uh, the screw machines, and the saws were on this side of, of the street that divided the plant. Also maintenance and repair was on the west side. The, uh, the old Hart Par machining area existed back in 1970s when I worked there. It was in a lower area under maintenance and repair and it still had the line shaft in it that ran the machines prior to every machine having their own independent power source. So that kind of was something that was interesting that I stumbled on by accident one day when we had a tornado drill. that good now um so you see both the aerial photos of the plant 
with the tractor display building in the front and whatnot and usually look at so which direction would those have been taken from back over here in the corner um, I didn't to my knowledge we to my knowledge we didn't ever display a tractor well that would have been part that would have been prior to 68 when the display when that little tractor display building was destroyed in the tornado oh okay it's probably up there probably up next to the highway or the main street so to speak so we can go up to the cross street and then I can kind of show you what was on the east side of that all right What was the name of this street you said? Uh, I don't remember exactly. I don't know. East Street, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I can figure that part out later. Um, this, this area here was the original part where the original line shaft and basement manufacturing was of the Hart Par original factory uh, when I was here after they moved the engine manufacturing and uh, assembly from many from Hopkins Minnesota down here it was in this area here and uh, that engine was used on the 1355 to the 955 in the 2150. Um, on the east side of the street, the area right here was the basically the only office area and it, that wasn't on the west end of the plant. It was human resources where all the hiring was done and interviews and that was taken care of. The first aid station was here um, and the uh, plant guards would also use that as their patrol headquarters during their uh, shifts. Um, the area just here to the south was the area where the hydraulic housings, hydraulic valves, um, hydraulic covers, hydraulic cases were machined. Uh, there were some hones to do the valves. Um, then there was a clean room on the south side of that and in there the hydropowers were assembled the uh, hydraulic systems three point upper three point stuff was all assembled there and then it was moved 35 feet to the head of the uh, assembly line um, as you come in this area right here to the left would have been shipping and receiving all the uh, vendor parts would come in there be tested uh, to see if they met specifications and then after that they would either be shipped to the assembly line or if it was another part that was uh, needed for repair or whatever it would go over here to maintenance and repair so all the incoming merchandise and parts would come through shipping and receiving also if there were repair parts that were going out to the stores which would be the parts depots they would be shipped from here also. Uh, just east of that, they built a, a temporary, 
It was supposed to be a temporary housing. It was a bubble that was uh, held up by fan pressure and uh, it was used to store somewhat non-perishable items that could be out in the cold but not necessarily in the elements themselves. Um, as you went further to the east, the machines in that area were dealing basically with the larger parts of the tractor, the front frames, tubs, the uh, rear gear cases, and that machining. Uh, then fairly close to that along the east wall of the building there was uh, the lathes and chuckers uh, boring machines. The interspersed among these were radial drills, uh, NCN or CNC machines that uh, drilled the uh, various hydraulic valves and, and covers. Uh, the, all the wheels were done on one machine. It was a, a vertical lathe. It was a, called the Bullard, and uh, that was a job because uh, all the pieces were so heavy. It was just a difficult job. Uh, as you went further on down the line, there was a, a tool room that uh, back in the day before there was uh, a big switch over to the carbide tip stuff a lot of the specialty tooling was made in the tool rooms to do specific jobs and while I was there they switched from that system to a continental system uh, with the replaceable carbide tips. Uh, past that was a bullpen part of it where they did the allied equipment area, where they did the backhoes uh, that were based on the 263s and the 278s. Uh, then you go over along the south wall was the main assembly conveyor and off to the north side of that were the sub-assembly areas where the, the dashes would be put together, the rear axle carriers would be put together, uh, the engines would get their some of their wiring harnesses and and uh, then that would be moved over to the assembly line which ran across the uh, the south end of the building. Um, then they had the paint booth the uh, and the oven and as in my experience I was never much involved with what went on past the, the paint booth but there they put everything that wasn't green on the tractors, uh, some of the side sheet metal that was painted prior uh, would be put on, the wheels and tires um, that are the uh, clover white, they, they would be put on just as they came out and then the tractors would go to the bullpen area to be run on Zyno and, and check to make sure that they were all doing what they were supposed to do. I'm not real fa familiar with the setup of the foundry which was over that area over there. Um, I just, I 
was over there looking for casting. I never really got involved with what was going on over there. And then where would the test track have been? Well, we'll go up to the Cleveland area okay. and we'll take a look at that. So. Quite a change. It looks like it's going to change even more by all the construction going on. Develop the site because you know it's too much area to be setting. Okay, try again. Okay, this area was called the Cleveland area. Uh, the some of the experimental stuff and the testing was done in this area. It was a test track out back that uh, they did the uh, low dynamometer driving and driving and driving, testing rear ends, and uh, then also around this area was the area that uh, when tractors were not spoken for. They were put in a lot out here and uh, at times it was green but it wasn't green because it was grass on the ground. It was green because of hover tractors were covering it. So this was the pre-shipment area uh, before they shipped them out to the dealers. That's what the area is. There's there, this, be, this field here used to be full of tractors out there and up on that side up there too. So, I don't know, probably 15, 20 acres of ground was don't used for that. So that dyno car that you saw in the video I did in the museum, this is where the test track was, where it spent its working life. And you said that this building was here at that time too? Yes, it was. Yeah. Which actually, I think I've seen a picture. I don't know exactly what they were doing, but I think there was a picture. I wonder if at one point that, was that loading dock deal always there? Do you remember? Yes, I'm sure it was. Okay. There's a picture of a 1655 hooked up to some goofy concoction of a PTO dynamometer dealio sitting in front of what looks like that building, but it would have been sitting, I think, right about where that loading dock is. Well, I, I don't, like I say, I'm not real familiar with if there was any modifications done to this building as far as the loading dock is concerned. Because it's being used for a trucking firm now, that may have been added mm -hmm. later. Alright, well, there's the one building left that survived Oliver, so I guess it sounds like this is our last stop. And so, you go down this road and around the corner on the other side of them houses, that's where the main building was, and then you come around this corner and this would have been the back end of it, so. so I guess that's the end of our Oliver plant tour, and we'll get Al off of his feet. And I have to make sure that this has been mem memories from 50 years ago, so may not be 100% correct, but you get the general idea where certain things were. Oh, we'll get the pictures out, and we'll grade you based on that. <laughs> okay. I hope you don't use a red pen. Alrighty, well, I guess that's it for this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one.